I, I was a Snowden supporter from the very beginning. What he what he wanted to blow the whistle on was the fact that NSA was spying on American citizens. Not only is it against the law for NSA to spy on American citizens, it's a part of NSA's charter that they're not allowed to spy on American citizens. Mm -hmm. Since 9-11, it's been literally dragnet warrantless wiretapping on all American communications. Well, that's illegal. And again, if you want to intercept Americans' communications, fine. But you got to change the law. Right. So Snowden couldn't go to the oversight committees. Snowden couldn't go to, uh, to his, his boss. They were all involved. There's another NSA whistleblower who's become a dear friend of mine by the name of Tom Drake. So Tom Drake was the first person to blow the whistle on NSA's warrantless wiretapping. And his, his story, make your hair stand up, uh, on, on 9-11, 9-11 was his first day at NSA. He had been a, an officer in the Air wow. Force, and then he joined NSA in the Senior Intelligence Service. So this is, he's arguably the country's leading expert on, on internet privacy issues. So on 9-11, it's his first day, and he said they were like giddy at NSA because they were just waiting for us to be attacked so they could start implementing all these programs that they had developed that they knew were illegal, so they couldn't implement them and then when the attack comes, all you have to say is national security and you can do whatever you want. So Tom said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys want to implement this program that intercepts the communications of all Americans when we have this other program, this smaller program called Stellar Wind that recognizes when the communication is from a bad guy or a suspected bad guy. And so instead of just grabbing everybody's phone calls and text messages and emails, it only grabs the bad guy's phone calls, text messages and emails. Um, that was stellar wind. Stellar wind. And they told him to mind his business. So he went through the chain of command. First he went to his boss. His boss told him, you're new. This is none of your business. You don't know what you're doing. So he thought about it for a while, and he went to the inspector general at NSA. The inspector general, like the CIA inspector general, wasn't read into the program and told him, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. Mm. We're not allowed to intercept the communications of Americans. Then he went to the general counsel. The general counsel said, you're in way over your head, buddy. You need to stop. So then he went to the Pentagon inspector general, because NSA is a, a division, a, a bureau of the, of the Defense Department. What did the, what did the Inspector General do at uh, the Pentagon? They destroyed the evidence that he brought out to, to prove his case. They shredded everything. So he decided then he's going to go to the Oversight Committee. So he goes to the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence and says, listen, NSA, since 9-11, they've been intercepting the phone calls, emails, and text messages of, of all Americans, everybody. And so what happened when the committee asked NSA for clarification? They raided Tom's house. They arrested him. They charged him with seven counts of espionage and two counts of theft of government property, being the information Right? The information's in his head. He walked out of the building with the information. He stole it. Right? He stole it and what? gave it to the Congressional Oversight Committee. I apologize. Oh, I hit the camera. Um, in the end... They're saying he stole it just because he remembered it? Yes. Yeah. In the end, um, they were forced to drop all the charges against him because he did it exactly the way that we were taught to do it. But... Like many of us in the intelligence community, his wife was an NSA officer, just like mine was a CIA officer. And when they were arresting him, the FBI went to his wife and said, we're arresting your husband and raiding your house right now as we speak. You're either with him or you're with us. And she chose them. So he, he lost everything. He lost his pension. He lost his house. He lost his five kids. He lost his marriage. You know, uh, I have to, there's a, just being the devil's advocate, there's, um, another guy who I had on here. His, um, his name's Andrew. He was a former CIA spy 
and and I made this sort of argument to him and his his response was you have to be okay with giving up freedoms for for the United States government. That is a very common and very typical right wing trope. Because what he laid out was this pyramid that um, resembles the creation of a state. He said on the lowest on the lowest level of the pyramid, you have individualism, which is we all are out for ourselves. We can all go, you know, kill whoever we want, take whatever we want. Um, the second level of the pyramid is tribalism, where you have the tribes, and basically what that does that that protects me from. That protects you from me going into your tribe and clubbing your wife over the head and stealing her mm-hmm. and you doing the same to me. That's, right. that's tribalism. He said the, the next level of the pyramid is the creation of a state where you have this, this separate government that basically protects, that, that does all this stuff for us. That's what taxes are for and that's what the government is for to keep us all safe and to do all these things and to deal with other countries and keep the balance, the world balance in check. Um, and his argument for that is you have, you know, you have to be okay with the government infringing on our privacy, infringing on, on certain amount of things to a certain extent. Yeah. And, and, um, that's one philosophy of democracy that's incompatible with mine. Remember Dick Cheney was asked about, um, all the innocent people that we had at Guantanamo. We had over 700 people at Guantanamo at one point, and almost all of them were innocent of any crime. Mm. And he said that he would rather arrest a million innocent people than to allow one guilty person to, to get off uh, uh, Scott Did he really free. say that? Yeah. Uh-huh. And wow. it's the same idea. Like, these guys would rather take away our civil liberties to stop another attack I would rather maintain my civil liberties and risk another attack mm. because the civil liberties are more important to me. What is it common for husband and wife to be Very. in the CIA together? Very. In fact, the CIA culture is such that they encourage CIA romances because you're both really? cleared. Right. So you can talk about, you know, shit at, at night when you're laying in bed and and you're not violating your secrecy agreement. Listen, the CIA has softball leagues and football leagues and LGBTQ organizations and a quilting league and uh, (laughs) Christian organizations, everything that you would want to do in your life, you know, with other people, it's inside the CIA. And that way you can talk about work and they can talk about work and nobody gets in trouble. They try to keep you insulated from the outside world. They don't want you talking to other people out there. It's, That's it's wild. unsafe. <laughs>